Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, calls me from a world of care, bids me at my Father's throne, make all my wants and wishes known. In seasons of distress and grief, my soul has often found relief, and often escaped the tempter's snare, by thy return, sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, the joys I feel, the bliss I share. Those whose anxious spirit burn with strong desires to thy return. With such I hasten to the place where God my Savior shows his face. And gladly take my station there and wait for thee, sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer. Thy wings shall my petition bear to him who's true and faithfulness engage the waiting soul to bless. And since he bids me seek his face, believe his word and trust his grace. I cast on him my every care and wait for thee, sweet hour of prayer. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to The Doctor is In on the ICN Impact Network. I am your host, Dr. Rick Sampson, Professor of Biblical Theological Studies, President and Founder of Sanctification Deliverance International Ministries, where we talk about health, healing, and wellness from a biblical and medical perspective. If you would like to know more about this ministry and would like to support this program with your donations, go to our website at thehealthminister.org or send it to Sanctification Deliverance Ministries, P.O. Box 1082, Norristown, PA 19404, or email, our email address rather, is sanctificationministries59 at gmail.com. On this program, you will hear sermons about the ministry of health, healing, and wellness as told in the Bible and continuing into the 21st century. So, welcome again, ladies and gentlemen, to The Doctor Is In. There are probably a few reasons that might motivate you to care for yourself to be healthy. Here are some of the reasons that motivated me to want to be healthy, and I think that these reasons are why God will want you to be healthy as well. First, being healthy glorifies God. Number two, your body is his temple. And three, you'll have more energy to do his ministry. When I say that being healthy glorifies God, I must quote 1 Corinthians 10.31 that whatsoever we do, we do it to the glory of God. It also tells us in Isaiah that we were created and formed by God to glorify Him. This is our primary purpose in life, to glorify God, ladies and gentlemen. We do this when we care for our bodies and live a healthy lifestyle. I want you to know that our bodies is God's temple because 1 Corinthians 6, 19 to 20 tells us that God's Holy Spirit lives inside the believer. After we accept the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, God gives us His Spirit to help us live the kind of life He wants us to live. And since God actually lives in us, Paul tells us in this verse that God bought us with a high price, which was the death of Jesus. So then because of this, ladies and gentlemen, we are obligated to care for our bodies, which is his temple. Ephesians 2 and 10 helps us see that we are God's masterpiece, created to do good things that he had planned it for us to do. Now we all know that the more fit and healthy we are, the more energy we can have to be witnesses for other people, and the more energy we have, the more we can put into ministry. We'll also be better able to sustain ourselves for that long haul. So if you want to reclaim your health and vitality and take back your life and empower yourself in important biblical principles that will address prevalent spiritual factors that have a positive effect on your mental health, emotion, physical health, then I want you to join me right here every Sunday night at 8 p.m. on The Doctor Is In. And now, here's a note from your doctor. 
Did you know that drinking sodas can cause you to age fast? Soda consumption can promote disease and obesity, according to the UC San Francisco researchers who found in a new study that drinking sugary drinks was associated with the aging of cells, as reported in the Science Daily Paper. Regular consumption of sodas can influence metabolic disease development through accelerated cell aging. The extremity of high dose of sugar uh, that we put into our body within seconds by drinking sodas, ladies and gentlemen, is toxic to the metabolism. Now, most people who are, say, in their 90s are almost always uh, when I see some of them, they're mostly slumped over and they can't stand up fully straight. Well, a lot of that comes from limited flexibility and spinal support uh, they had when they were in uh, their younger years. But low flexibility in your 20s and 30s can cause some problems later on as you get older. You see, the main ones uh, being joint or muscle pain and an overall hunchback look, you, you'll get that effect. Now, there are certain types of exercises that can help you loosen your muscles and your joints, such as cardio exercises and weightlifting. Just make sure that you're going to start and end with warm-up exercises and focus on stretching both before and after exercising. Also, people with sleep apnea, age faster as well than the rest of us. Studies show that severity of sleep disruption was associated with age acceleration. These associations were stronger in women than in men, suggesting that women may be particularly vulnerable to the adverse effects of sleep loss. Now, a good night's sleep, ladies and gentlemen, can work wonders for your youthful experience and since your face relaxes more while you're asleep, that can also help soften the lines on a person's face. It is recommended that you get at least eight hours of sleep per night. Now, here's another fact that can cause you to age fast. Stress, that's right, stress. Don't you know that uh, stress and being compassed about with so many problems in life, it, it adds on that stress that causes you to age fast. So don't stress out too much over your problems, all right, because again, this will cause you to age fast. Now, telomeres are at the end of the chromosomes, right? These are the structures inside each cell that contains what? Your genes. A report from Harvard Health says over time, the telomeres get shorter. When they get short enough, the cell dies. Chronic stress leads to shorter telomeres and people with shorter telomeres are at greater risk for several major diseases, including heart disease and some forms of cancer. This is one more reason to reduce the amount of stress in your life. And one last point, cigarettes. Yes, let me talk about cigarettes because they can also age you. When you take a puff of a cigarette, you feel a sense of calming down. But to repeat that action has the opposite effect on your blood vessels. With every puff that you take, your blood vessels immediately become thinner and they spasm. This reduces circulation and the oxygen level in your blood. In a sense, you give your skin the inability to breathe. What happens when your skin can't breathe? You guessed it, premature aging. So, it's not just the wrinkles that are formed, but your skin will also age by becoming dry and dull. You're also depriving your skin of nutrients. There are thousands of chemicals rolled up into a cigarette. When you combine these chemicals with the lack of circulation and oxygen, 
it causes your collagen and elastin to break down. Collagen and elastin are what gives your skin its strength and elasticity. The result is sagging skin, dull appearance, and uneven skin tone. So, if you want to reclaim your health and vitality and take back your life and empower yourself in important biblical principles that will address prevalent spiritual factors that have a positive effect on your mental, emotional, and physical health, once again, join me here every Sunday night at 8 p.m. on The Doctor Is In. And that is your report from The Doctor's Note. All right, let us now go to the Word of God, and we're going to look at tonight 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 to 20. Let's read those scriptures. What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own? For you are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. If I could place a number of different food substances on your tongue without you seeing them, would you be able to identify them by their taste? How is it that you would be able to tell me accurately what each item uh, is even though you could not see them? You could tell by the taste with your taste buds. You see, the taste buds on the tip of your tongue tell you when something is sweet. Taste buds on the side of your tongue tells you when something is salty or sour. And the ones on the back and in the middle tell you when something is bitter. Perhaps you've noticed that your sense of smell also has a great deal to do with your ability to taste. When you have, for example, say like a bad cold, your food doesn't have as much flavor to it. In fact, if you hold your nose while you eat, you lose much of your ability to taste. There's something else that you might not have thought about, and that is, whatever you taste must be wet on that tongue. You see, if you put something dry, right, onto a dry tongue, you can't taste it. This is another reason why you should thoroughly chew your food because you get much more flavor out of it as your saliva mixes with the food. Now, many people do not realize that they are actually slaves to their taste buds. Why is that? Uh, one person uh, who likes something very much and someone else dislikes the very same thing very much. It's because the way the taste buds on your tongue have been trained. You see, the training of your taste buds start when you are an infant. And by the time a child is just a few years old, he is already the slave to his taste buds. Such a situation is a great pity and it is really the fault of the parents who have allowed the child to be ruled by his appetite. Now, because of uh, their slavery to the taste buds, many people live to eat instead of eating to live. But what I want you to understand is that your taste buds can be retrained and you can become the master of them instead of their slave. You can learn to enjoy the many wonderful flavors of food that God has put into the variety of food he has given us. Now, uh, there is a saying that flavor is the soul of food and that spices and herbs are the soul of flavor. What is the most important or common flavoring we use in almost everything that we cook? The word is salt. Without salt, our vegetables and other main foods would, die, would not taste very tasty, right? In addition to salt, we also use other seasonings in order to add uh, interest and make an ordinary dish a little more distinct from the rest.
let's consider some of the more common seasonings uh, which many people use. Uh, salt, right? Uh, bay leaves, curry leaves, cinnamon, ginger, paprika, a clove, vinegar, black pepper, mustard, curry powder, uh, small hot peppers, and many kinds of mixed flavors such as hot sauces of various kinds, right? All of these items add flavor to our food, but not all of them are healthy for us to consume. You see, hot peppers, curry powders, and all other hot, irritating spices are harmful to the very delicate membranes lining the gastrointestinal tract. You see, using these spices also deadens, what, the taste buds, making it impossible to enjoy the food and its natural flavor. Now, the result is that people with deadened taste buds want more and more, what, highly seasoned foods because they can't taste it. So you'll see them put all of these herbs and spices and seasons on it to bring the taste out. You will notice that vinegar is also in the group of foods that are not good for your digestive system. Now, the word vinegar means sour wine. The use of too much vinegar can and may produce effects similar to alcohol consumption. When patients are taken to the hospital, uh, say with stomach complaints, the doctor orders a diet free from these irritating spices because he knows that these can aggravate the situation. But we should not wait for symptoms like these to develop. Our attitude should be that when we know these things are damaging uh, the body, which is God's temple, we should train ourselves, train our taste buds to not eat them. Now, it is the fact that many people are deliberately destroying their body, the temple, which God so fearfully and wonderfully made. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is serious because the Apostle Paul wrote, If any man defile or destroy the temple of God, him shall God destroy. 1 Corinthians 3.17 You know, this, or rather, there is a day coming. Ladies and gentlemen, when God is going to judge those who have, uh, out of ignorance, or ignored his counsel, his message, and his commands. He brought judgment in Noah's day by water. But in our day, in these last days, man is going to be judged by fire. Fire which is going to put an end to sin. We read, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all nations that forget God. Psalms 9.17 this world will not be allowed to continue on and on and wicked remain unpunished. For the Bible says that the time will come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begins at us, what shall be the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 17. Everybody is going to be judged according to what he has done in this life. While the righteous are given eternal life, the Bible lets us know that the wicked are consumed or rather condemned to eternal death. This is called the second death. This destruction of the wicked is going to be complete. Nothing will remain after it has gone through this fire. Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power? 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 9. The Bible says the fear or rather, and fear are not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both body and soul in hell. St. Matthew chapter 18, verse 28. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall consume away. Psalms chapter 37, verse 20. For while they be folding together as thorns, and while they are drunken as drunkards, they shall be devoured as stubble fully dry. The book of Nahum, chapter 1, verse 10. The Bible says, let both the wheat and the tares grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, go ye together. First are the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them. 
but gather the wheat into the barns. Matthew chapter 13, verse 30. In Matthew chapter 13, verse 39, we read, The harvest is the end of the world. Therefore, the wicked are not being uh, burned now. For God, or rather, for if God spared not the angels that sin, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. The Bible says the Lord knows how to deliver the good out of temptation and reserve the unjust until the day of judgment to be punished. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 4. Behold, the righteous shall be recompensed in the earth, much more the wicked and the sinner. Proverbs 11, 31. But the heavens and the earth which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto the fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 7. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, when the 1,000 year millennium period is finished, the new Jerusalem with all the saints in it descend to earth and Jesus leads the way. As soon as he uh, places his feet, his feet touches the Mount of Olives, it cleaves in the midst thereof towards the east and towards the west and there shall be a great valley and half of the mountain shall remove towards the north and half of it towards the south. The new Jerusalem settles in this valley. Jesus then resurrects the wicked dead, whose number is like the sands of the sea. Once again, the Bible says that Satan is set loose and leads the wicked against Christ. They shall surround this holy city, the new Jerusalem. God will then rain fire and brimstone upon the wicked and the whole world turns into a lake of fire, while the saints in the holy city are protected. The Bible says Satan and his followers are all consumed in this fire. Jesus renews this world and makes it a peaceful habitation for his saints forever and ever. In closing, brothers and sisters, we have only two choices, heaven or hell. God in his great love has done everything so that we might be saved, but he cannot choose for us. All those who choose to accept Jesus as their savior and surrender their life to him will be among his saints in the new earth. Those who will not make this choice right now, today, not tomorrow, will find their place in that lake of fire. May the Lord guide you so that you might make the right choice and do it now to thereby avoid eternal death in hell. For the Bible says that the wages of sin is death, Romans 6.23. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved, Acts chapter 4 verse 12. And the Bible says that my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them from my hand. St. John 10, 27. And this is the record that God has given to us eternal life and this life is his son. 1 John 5, 11. He that has the son has life. He that hath not the Son of God has not life, 1 John 5 and 12. But I would not have you to be ignorant concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, Daniel 12 and 2 and Ecclesiastes 3 and 20. For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know nothing, Ecclesiastes 9 and 5. For in death there is no remembrance of thee, Psalm 6 and 5. The dead praise not the Lord, neither any that go down into silence, Psalms 115 verse 17. 
For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16. I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. O oh, death, I will be thy plague. O oh, grave, I will be thy destruction. Hosea 13 and 14. And this is about the righteousness of Christ in his second event. 1 Corinthians 15, 51. For thou shalt be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. St. Luke 14, 14. What shall be the end of them that obey not the gospel? 1 Peter 4 and 17. The Bible says that sin is the transgression of the law. 1 John 3 and 4. It says, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction? 2 Thessalonians 1 and 9. And then the Bible says, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. St. Luke 13 and 3. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble, and the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall cleave, or rather leave them, neither root nor branch. Malachi 4 and 1. And shall thread down the wicked, they shall be ashes under the sole of your feet. Malachi 4 and 3. Then the Bible says, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. St. Matthew 5 and 5. This is Dr. Rick Sampson signing off tonight. Until we meet again next Sunday, right here at 8 p.m. on the Doctor's Inn, right here on the ICN Impact Network. May you prosper and be in good health.